Once upon a time, we shared this planet with many other species of human. To us today, it would seem like a strange, fantastical world, only it was real. For our new series, Human, we wanted to bring some of these prehistoric humans to life. And we did it through a high-tech process called photogrammetry. We had to select real-life models and capture them from all angles with cameras, an obscene number of cameras, 154. Then we stitched all those photos together to create a 3D model. Finally, we could manipulate the model with CGI and create our ancient humans. We used the most up-to-date information to create these long extinct beings. Imagine being famous for standing upright on two legs. Well, that's the claim to glory of Homo erectus, Latin for upright human. Only embarrassingly, they weren't the first ones to do it. Bipedalism actually evolved earlier, like millions of years earlier. Only to start with, it was a combination. They were sometimes walking upright and other times they were still up in the trees. So what makes Homo erectus so special? Well, they were the first human species to leave Africa and possibly the first to control fire. And to be fair, as much as they weren't the first species to stand upright, it's possible that they were the first species of human to walk entirely upright and not be in the trees at all. In the body shape of Homo erectus, we can see similarities to our own, but they also had a large but short rib cage rather than the longer, flatter chest of modern humans, making them appear much stockier. And some of the most interesting differences come in the head. So this is a replica, a copy of a Homo erectus that lived about 1.8 million years ago. And you can see that brow ridge is not something you would see on someone today. And see the face, see how it juts outwards in a way that ours doesn't tend to. You can especially see it around here. And you'll notice in our render, no chin. Now, this lack of chin might seem really unusual to us, but actually, all the other species, they're the chinless majority. We're the oddity, actually. As for why we have this chin, well, the jewelry's out. It's kind of a mystery. People have put forward all kinds of suggestions, including speech, chewing, even sexual selection. But truthfully, we don't know. Now you might be thinking, what about hair? Why is our Homo erectus hairless? Well, the fact of the matter is, we have no idea how much hair they had or how they might have styled it. There's nothing in the fossil record that tells us. So with all these models, we've gone with a hairless look. Anyway, back to erectus. You might be wondering what led to their extinction. Some scientists believe that the very last Homo erectus met their demise because of climate change, which shifted the environment from woodland to more dangerous rainforest. But I would suggest that we're asking the wrong question. They gave rise to many other species, including eventually us, and they stuck around for 2 million years. We've only been around for 300,000 years. So honestly, I think they did just fine. I mean, we should be so lucky. I want to talk about, hands down, the most unexpected human species to ever be discovered. It sent shockwaves through the scientific community. And amazingly, this species came to about this tall. Now, you might not be familiar with Homo floresiensis, but you're probably familiar with the nickname. These people were so fantastical that we named them after Lord of the Rings, hobbits. And their discovery was a fascinating tale in of itself. In 2003, archaeologists discovered a skeleton on the island of Flores in Indonesia that stood at about 106 centimeters or 3 feet 6 inches tall. They initially believed this belonged to a modern human child, but upon further investigation, they realized that the skull contained fully developed and erupted wisdom teeth. So many argued loudly that it was a Homo sapiens adult whose smallness was actually just a result of some kind of pathology. But they found others, hundreds of thousands of years apart. 
scientists came to the conclusion that Bilbo Baggins, or in our case, Mrs. Bilbo Baggins here, was in fact an entirely separate species of archaic human. However, it was so unbelievable to so many scientists, the idea of a small statured human with a small brain who was still capable of making stone tools. Precisely when they originated is unclear, but we know that some of the remains on the island of Flores in Indonesia are at least 700,000 years old. And these tiny humans shared the island with giant marabou storks that were taller than me, giant rats and Komodo dragons. So apparently some of the creatures on this island were kind of huge, just not them. And it's the remarkable size of these hobbits that's continued to fascinate scientists. Some scientists think that Homo floresiensis is an offshoot of Homo erectus who somehow landed on this secluded island and they underwent something which we call island dwarfism, which is when large animals get small and strangely, small animals get big. It's just a process that we know happens on islands. However, other scientists think that Homo floresiensis evolved from a far older and smaller species that predates Homo erectus. But there's no evidence of any earlier hominins before Homo erectus leaving Africa. So scientists disagree. Beyond their stature, these humans had wider hips proportionally compared to our narrower bodies and a much smaller skull and brain case protecting a brain that was roughly a third of the size of ours. In fact, their brains were closer in size to an adult chimpanzee. I mean, look at the difference. They're absolutely tiny. Homo floresiensis became extinct around 50,000 years ago, around the same time that Homo sapiens arrived on Flores and also during a period of major volcanic activity on the island. Much like their unusual height, the last days of this species remain a mystery. If I was to ask you to conjure up in your mind the image of a Neanderthal, you might imagine a knuckle-dragging, brutish creature. And after years of anti-Neanderthal propaganda, you'd kind of be forgiven. But how convenient is it that we have portrayed our closest relative in this light, especially when they're not around to defend themselves. Well, it turns out the truth is far more interesting. Now, Neanderthals show up about 130,000 years before us, Homo sapiens, and evolved outside of Africa, in Europe or Asia, spreading all the way from Wales to the mountains of Siberia. An interesting question in bringing a Neanderthal to life is skin colour. Now this would probably have varied Neanderthal to Neanderthal, but DNA samples of Neanderthal specimens from modern Europe found that those individuals probably had pale skin and some possibly even red hair. It seems that some Neanderthals might have adapted to the European environment, which is a higher latitude and therefore you have less sunlight. And lighter skin means that you can produce more vitamin D, even if you have less sunlight. So essentially, before Neanderthals, there was no need for lighter skin. And that's why we didn't have white people until then, because they hadn't been invented yet. Physically, you can see that Neanderthals looked markedly different to modern humans. They were stockier, with shorter arms and legs, and a more muscular body. You can see we enlarged the nose of our model. This is because Neanderthals adapted to their colder environment and needed a wider nose to regulate the cold, dry, ice age air. As for the skull, well, their brain size was similar to ours. So what does that tell us about Neanderthal smarts? Obviously, they definitely didn't achieve as much as Homo sapiens. They didn't write or paint the Mona Lisa or for that matter, create catastrophic global weather conditions. But they were definitely smarter than we used to think. They crafted tools, cooked with fire, decorated objects that may have been used as jewelry, and some may have even buried their dead. And finally, they're receiving some posthumous decent PR. Visualizing these species up close reminds us of a stark fact. It was only 300,000 years ago that at least six species of human occupied this planet. Folks, we were not alone. 
And while other species interbred with our own, only we, Homo sapiens, remain. Surviving on planet Earth has long been an arduous challenge, and 99.9% .9 of species that have ever lived are now extinct. And these lost ancestors and relatives are a reminder that we Homo sapiens shouldn't forget just how fragile life on this planet can be.